We are continuing our journey north to Seattle, Washington, and on the way, we just had to stop at Mount St. Helens National Monument, which is where we are and which is what is behind us. <laughs> we are at the Lewitt Viewpoint, which is uh, just an excellent viewpoint that we just had to stop at on the way up to um, Johnston Ridge Observatory, mm -hmm. which is um, like the final destination for us because you know it looks it's it's up on a ridge and it looks directly into the caldera of mount st helens and it's going to be awesome up there we stopped at the visitor center which surprisingly is really far away yeah. from not like just 40 miles <laughs> yeah not just from mount st helens but from the national monument land itself it's really far away but mm -hmm. uh, we stopped in there got some information and learned what you know there was to do in the area and what we wanted to do which is the johnston observatory or johnston ridge observatory mm -hmm. and the uh, eruption trail so while driving up to the johnston ridge observatory there were just a ton of lookouts and viewpoints along the way named and unnamed some were just turnoffs on the road mm -hmm. but we stopped at just about all of them because they all offered you know a different perspective a different distance from mount st helens mm -hmm. to kind of give a different look and also on the way up here we went into the forest learning center which is a pretty big building that has very intricate and complex exhibits just a ton of them that mostly focus on the landscape how the land and the forest was affected by the eruption and it shows how all that wood had to be salvaged as fast as possible by the logging companies in the area or they risked losing all that timber and then after the salvaging efforts how in the areas that they were allowed to replant uh, how they replanted and what they replanted and driving up here you could really see the areas that were replanted because they were just unnaturally homogenous and organized it was really weird seeing all the noble fir trees that were all the same height the same color the same width they were just the exact <laughs> same it was so weird it's like someone copy and pasted it all yeah, over the mountain <laughs> exactly yeah it was it was very weird very unnatural and uh but once you entered the um national monument yeah the national monument area you instantly knew because not only was there a sign but <laughs> <laughs> there was a sign but you could tell the landscape just totally changed because they were not allowed to do any replanting in the National Monument land. Uh, they they just had to let the land recover on its own. So it went from it went from densely forested and very symmetric and organized to just scattered all over the place. There's yeah, yeah it's still balded hills and everything. Yeah, bald here. There was knocked over trees in other places. Some places were dense, but it was just like all kinds of mishmashed trees and bushes and etc. And it was it was just really weird seeing that change in landscape once you mm -hmm. entered the uh, actual National Monument land. Yeah, it was really cool. I think my favorite thing so far has been at the Forest Learning Center, we learned that people within 60 miles of the eruption didn't even hear it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was really cool. Some some weird phenomena with how the sound waves worked with the eruption. Uh, people nearby within 60 miles heard nothing from the yeah. eruption. Nothing at all. Yeah. It's very cool. So there's a lot of cool facts <laughs> that we learned in the Forest Learning Center and that even isn't even our destination. Oh, and it's free there too. There's yeah. no admission and it's open till like 4 p.m. I think. Yeah. So definitely stop in there if you make your way up to Mount St. Helens. the Johnston Ridge Observatory facing the caldera of Mount St. Helens and it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> 
The first thing we saw when we were here is a movie. They offer a 15 minute short film about the devastation that the eruption of Mount St. Helens brought to the area and then also the new growth that's in the area and just how the landscape has completely changed because of it. And it's really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, if you're unfamiliar with what happened here, in 1980, uh, Mount St. Helens basically had, uh, what was it, it a, a huge... It had like a bulge on its side yeah. that grew really and, big. And then there's this huge landslide. The, the mountain essentially collapsed on itself on the north side and there was this huge landslide. And then a uh, massive um, gas, pressurized gas, yeah. just escaped from the mountain, causing this huge explosion that essentially annihilated the land all on the north side of Mount St. Helens for miles and miles. Yeah. And it, it knocked all the trees down, basically stripped them, knocked them over, and just covered the entire Toodle River Valley and beyond in a layer of ash. And it just made, it. it they said that the landscape looked like a moonscape. Yeah. It was gray and barren. Which is really cool, but Something that we really like about this observatory is you can basically learn anything and everything you want to about Mount St. Helens, except one thing. You don't get to learn the current <laughs> seismic activity or recent seismic activity. Well, Jenny is bummed. She wants to know like <laughs> to the day, like what is happening right now with the seismic activity and there's no like present information. But oh, well. <laughs> what's cool is since, we also learned that since the massive 1980 eruption, there have been two more eruptions. Mm -hmm. uh, one was um, two or three years. In 1982. Yeah, uh, where some more lava began to escape from the Caldara crater and yeah. actually formed a dome. And, uh, and then in 2004, there was a, the, a larger eruption than in 1982 that uh, started to squeeze out lava, it said like, uh, toothpaste from a, from a tube, yeah, <laughs> just right out from the center of the crater. And so now there are two domes inside uh, the Mount St. Helens caldera. And it's kind of cool because it's like it's begun the mountain building phase again. Yeah. So who knows what this mountain will look like decades or centuries from now. It may have fully regrown into a full mountain again. Who yeah. knows? It's or kinda, may even erupt again someday. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> cool to think what the mountain could look like you know, hundreds of years from now. What's been kind of a bummer though is that Mount St. Helens has been covered in clouds basically, well no, all day. Yeah, all, all day. day. It has not been clear at all yet. Yeah, which is kind of weird because the sky is actually fairly open. There's just like a lot of big puffs of clouds here and there, but for the most part it's blue. But the clouds have just been like hanging around the, the mountain, mountain or yeah. they're like <laughs> spawning from the mountain. <laughs> so, know. but the sky has, in general, the sky has been clearing up as the day has gone on. So hopefully the sun continues to burn the clouds away. If that's how that works, I don't know, I'm not a meteorologist. But I, I don't know. Hopefully the clouds keep going away and hopefully we get a spectacular view of the bare Mount St. Helens. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, but. Be able to see both of the little, the little domes inside right now, we can just see part of one of them. Yeah, only time will tell though. But for now, we're gonna go on that eruption trail, which is a point eight mile in and out trail. And hopefully it teaches us some more about Mount St. Helens. Yeah, that we haven't already learned yeah. in the very, very large amount of information that's available in this area. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> a visitor center is packed. Or yes. observatory. Johnston Ridge Observatory. Packed with info. Yes. We just finished the eruption trail. It was a really nice, super easy, uh, paved uh, 0.4 mile in, 0.4 mile back out hike that, you know, just basically had info panels that taught us more about Mount St. Helens and the area. And at the end, there was a memorial to the lives lost due to the 1980 eruption. So the whole trail was really cool and taught us a lot. Yeah, there was even a volunteer up near the very tippy top of the trail um, on like this round map type thing that yeah. had arrows pointing to all the different 
um, notable things around here. It like even the, pointed the, to the, Mount Adams and yeah, like the various yeah. peaks in the area. Yeah, so it was that was really, really cool. cool. And it was really awesome because the clouds that were covering the top of Mount St. Helens finally went away for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> and as they started to clear out, we were just like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, it's happening, it's happening. <laughs> so we were really happy. And it was really cool to be able to see inside of Mount St. Helens. And we got a full view of the two domes yes. that are starting to form or have been forming. They've been forming. Yeah, yeah, from the lava flows. Yeah, now the, it doesn't look like Two different domes it just kind of looks like one whole bubbly area yeah. in the middle but um after going through the observatory we learned that they are two separate areas so yeah the cool. nearest one was in 1982 mm -hmm. eruption and the further one back from our viewpoint was from the 2004 eruption yeah and something else that we saw on the eruption trail that was really awesome is that there were all these downed trees on the far away hillsides they were all facing the same way yeah <laughs> that were all still there from the 1980 eruption those are the exact trees and they were all facing the same exact way it was mm -hmm. really neat it was really neat and you can see on the opposite side of the ridge that is the downslope not facing Mount St. Helens. There are nice big green bushes and some trees over there. Yeah. So you can tell like the the bald side with all the dead trees is what was damaged and destroyed by Mount St. Helens eruption and the other side is nice and green and lush. It's just the stark contrast on one single ridge is just awesome. Yeah, the side facing Mount St. Helens is what Jenny meant uh, is bald, yeah. trees knocked over and everything. And the side not facing Mount St. Helens on the other side of the ridge is still lush and green. Yeah, yeah. But that is all we have for you today. We have to go home and get ready, get the RV ready, because tomorrow we're finally making it yeah. to Seattle, Washington to spend a month with David's brother. Yep. So we have to get the RV ready. Yep, we are only here for just a few days. We're waiting for the best day to come see Mount St. Helens. So now that we have, we're out of here yep. and we get to go and hang out with my brother at his house for the next month. Yep. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want more videos from us, be sure to subscribe. And if you want more details on what we did today, be sure to check out the link to the blog post in the description below. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.